Welcome back to the channel guys. Today guys, I'm going to do my AFCON Day 2 review guys. So I want to know what you guys think in the comments below. Please remember to like and subscribe. And yeah, sorry for the video coming out late guys. I just was focused on El Clasico. And that's the reason why I was able to get this video out late. And of course, I did do a stream following after that. So that's why I'm a bit late. Anyways, I'm going to try to make sure this never happens again. So let's start with the first game which you got here is Nigeria 1, Ecuador Guinea 1. Nigeria, man. I don't even know where to start with. Because when you look at the starting 11 Nigeria put out there, this is a very weird 11. A 4 1 4 1? And I'm sorry. A Wubi? Simon? Aya? Trust Okong? My goodness me, Nigeria's midfield defense is horrendous. The only positives I would say for Nigeria was Osman and Lukman. And guys, Osman. Victor Osman. Guys, I want to show you guys this crazy stat. And I'm not even joking around when I say this. Look closely right here, guys. Only one accurate pass out of seven? 14%? Nah, that, that's just wild. That for me is blasphemous. And guys, Victor Osman, yes, he had a good game. He scored the goal. My goodness me, man. He missed a lot of chances in this game. And I don't think it's really fair to blame everything on Osman because obviously for the first goal, uh, Nigeria should have way better defensively. They allowed Equatorial Guinea way too much space. And I have no idea why no one's trying to mark him, tackle him, and whatsoever. And you got a good, you got to give credit to Equatorial Guinea keeper. He, he was great today. He made a lot of good saves. But my goodness me, my Nigeria, man. The midfield is so bad. The defense is so bad. And my issue with Nigeria is that this is a very, this is a good team. This is a good team. But the issue is this team is so unstructured, unbalanced. You could put any center forward there and it still wouldn't work. Even if you put like Holland and Mbappe there. I don't know if this team does it. Because the midfield and defense is just so bad. And I'm really worried for Nigeria because their next game is against Ivory Coast. And based on what we saw Ivory Coast do yesterday against Guinea-Bissau, I think Ivory Coast might destroy them in the midfield battle. As for Ivory Guinea, they defended well in this game. They had a good game plan. Obviously, it was a frustrating Nigeria. And my issues with Ecuador Guinea in this group has been primarily the fact that these guys are so defensive. These guys don't score enough goals. And that's why I don't really rate Ecuador Guinea that highly. But I got to say this, though. Ecuador Guinea, for me are very defensively solid, and they're going to be break difficult to break down. They're going to be difficult to break down. And for Nigeria, man, it's going to be really tough for them to get out this group because they have to beat Guinea-Bissau. It's as simple as that. Anything less than a W against Guinea-Bissau, they're pretty much out. Because let's be real, guys. I don't know if they can beat Ivory Coast. I'm going to say this right now. I'm not sure if they can beat Ivory Coast at this moment. So, that was a great header from Victor Osman, man. Luke, man, got the assist. And, man, Victor Osman, man, you really should have been scoring those chances right at the end. There were so many chances Victor Osman had, man. And for Nigeria, man, it's just not good enough, man. It's not good enough. You really shouldn't be. The fact that you had to struggle against Equatorial Guinea is just sad. And the amount of chances I was missed. I mean, look at the XG, man. 19 shots, 7 on target, 7 big chances, man. If you don't take your chances, you're going to get punished. That's how we know. And that's how we know in African football. And that very well panned out today. For Nigeria, man, do they beat Guinea-Bissau? We're going to have to wait and see. So that's pretty much my takes on that game. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next game we have here. And this game, this day was like the underdog day. Like all the underdogs got a result. Two draws for the underdogs and one W. Only none of the big teams won today. Which is really interesting. Moving on to Egypt 2, Mozambique 2. Wow. Mozambique, man. Take a flipping bow. Because this was a team that I was like, nah. Nah, they're not going to do anything. They're not going to do anything. I'll be I'll be the first one to admit that I thought this team would be there to make up the numbers. I thought this would be a team that teams would stab hat against. But my goodness me, they proved me wrong massively. And I have to say this on the day, Egypt, man, not very impressed. Not very impressed, man. And we have to give credit to Renildo. Renildo, for me, was amazing in the day. He man-marked Mohamed Salah. Mohamed Salah, for me, for most of this game, was largely underwhelming. And the fact that he pocketed Salah, that it only took a penalty for Salah to score, is just unbelievable. For Egypt, man, they were good in the first half. You know, they created that goal. Mohamed scoring that young striker. I was talking to you guys about the preview. 
Salah made the pass there for Muhammad, and Muhammad opens the scoring. And then from that point on, Egypt kept peppering, pep peppering, 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 peppering the first half and kept creating chance after chance after chance. And then the second half, man, after so many chances, Mozambique finally scored. And it was a great, great effort. In the 55th minute, a great, great, uh, a great header in the box from the 55th minute. Great, great delivery into the cross. And Witty scored. And then a few minutes later, when Egypt didn't expect it, Bach went on through. He got past a player that someone tried to slide tackle, and he made it 2-1 at this point. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my god, Egypt are in big trouble. From that point on, Egypt kept peppering, kept peppering the goal, peppering, trying to get that goal equalizer. And then a penalty was given in stoppage time for a foul inside the box. Mohamed Salah steps up and takes the penalty and converts, and he gives Egypt a 2 all game and he almost missed a penalty that was a really close penalty that just went in and for mozambique man they're gonna feel devastated that oh we were so close to hold and getting a famous win here because this could have been a huge man for mozambique this could have been like i think one of the one of the most famous wins they ever had in their history so for egypt man they lucked out there in the end getting that last minute penalty and for egypt man they look good they play better football under the new coach um rui vittura but my issue with this new coach is that even though Egypt are playing better football, they're not as defensively solid as they were in the last edition. And criticize Carlos Curios all you will and say now he was a defensive coach, he was playing terrible football, he was effective. Egypt made it to the final with him in charge and almost won it. They only lost on penalties. So I don't know if this is a good point. I, I don't know, man. We're going to have to wait and see how uh, Rui Vittoria does with Egypt because Egypt, man, the, the, the standards are high. You have to win the AFCON. Egypt, anything less than an AFCON W is a failure. It's a failure for this nation. Because remember, guys, Egypt is one of the most successful nations in African history. And if they don't win this AFCON, it's a failure. It's a failure, for, especially for Salah. And for Egypt, man, this team, it doesn't look great. It doesn't look great. But like I said, though, and the tournament, it's not about looking great. It's about getting it done. And Egypt, man, they got a point from this game in which they almost lost this game. So they got to give themselves... Kudos in that position, and they got to move on and win those next two games, man. Next up, it is Ghana 1, Cape Verde 2. My goodness me, Ghana. Ghana, absolute Ghana. I don't know what to say about this Ghana team. This Ghana team, for me, has been so bad. And guys, believe it or not, Kudos wasn't even in the squad. He wasn't even part of the bench. Was he injured for this game? I have no idea because it was so weird. When I saw, because I said this in my video, guys, and I still stand by this. If Ghana didn't have Mohamed Kudos, I genuinely do think they would get grouped. And we saw this today, how bad they were in an attack. And I'm sorry. Why are the Ayu brothers still part of the squad? I'm sorry. Jordan Ayu and Andre Ayu are beyond finished. I don't care if Jordan Ayu got the assist there for the goal. He's still crap. He is still crap. They shouldn't be anywhere near the starting 11. As for Ghana, man, they were terrible today. I'm sorry. They were terrible. They were absolutely terrible on the day. And they're lucky they only lost this by only one goal margin. Because trust me, man, Cape Verde were amazing on the day. They were defensively solid. They were going at Ghana. Ghana couldn't compete. They couldn't. And that first goal, man, Montara, man, at the, near, at the, the rebound there. Great, great goal there. I feel really bad for Ghana, though, because they scored a very nice equalizer in the 37th minute of the game. I think it was this guy, Asamiro. He scored a wonderful goal. Unfortunately, he got disallowed because I think there was a handball in the process. And then the second half, man, Ghana were just terrible. They scored an equalizer there finally from the corner, Digico. And then the last couple of minutes, man, Ghana capitulated there. A mistake by, made by Odoa and Mons and. The substitute guy, Rodriguez, comes off the bench, scores the game-winning goal. And Gilson Tavares, man, got the assist as well for the opening goal. And for Ghana, man, as I said, man, look how bad they were. 11 shots, one on target, two big chances missed. And even though Ghana did almost, I think they hit the post, I believe it was in the first half in the 30th minute. Yeah, you can see right here, guys. The 30th minute, they almost scored right here. I think if I could see, yeah, yeah. The 60th minute, they were very close. I think, the, yeah, yeah, they, they almost scored there. Man, Ghana for me were just terrible. They were so bad in the day. And for Cape Verde, man, this is a huge win. A huge, massive win on the op on their game. And this puts Cape Verde in a really good position because Cape Verde's next game is against Mozambique. And if Cape Verde can get a dub there, they can win against Mozambique. They're through to round of 16. 
And there's a potential possibility that one of Egypt or Ghana may not make it through. So, for Ghana men, as I said, they were a dreadful, absolutely abysmal. And for Chris Hewton, man, you got to change up your tactics, man. I don't understand where Kudos is. Is he injured? Because it doesn't say here on the, the football, man. And uh, the defense, man. Salisu was terrible. Adzo was terrible. The, Niger the Ghana def midfield was just so bad. And now we're just having a competition who's worse. Ghana or Nigeria? Let me know in the comments who's worse between the two. Because for me, between the two, I'm still taking Nigeria over Ghana. I still think Ghana's team is way worse than Nigeria. 100%. But yeah, anyways. I hope you guys did enjoy this recap and this underdog day. Because basically all the underdogs got the results. So underdog day, underdogs rise, man. And remember guys to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.